There are more possible Bitcoin private keys than there are atoms in the universe. How about that for an opening factoid, eh? So what this means is that even if all the computing power in the world was devoted to cracking a single private key, it would take an unfathomable amount of time to find the correct one. The sort of numbers that make your brain hurt. So, you know, just take my word for it. So as long as you keep your private key, well, private, you can be confident that ain't nobody going to be hacking your wallet and stealing your sats. Now, this security is one of the many things that makes Bitcoin so damn incredible and reminds us that when things go wrong, it's not the protocol that's the problem, rather a failure on the part of the human to have adequate security procedures in place. In short, Bitcoin, and indeed all of cryptocurrency, relies on encryption security protocols to protect transactions. If these protocols get broken, crypto has a big problem. Now, in recent years, there's been talk of something that could pose an existential threat to this security, and indeed, the security of computer systems and databases around the world. The UK's National Cyber Security Centre describes it as, quote, a new paradigm in computing, and it's something that's starting to generate headlines in the crypto media and beyond. Yep, quantum computing is now a thing, and its development is accelerating rapidly. Now, I suppose I could try and explain quantum computing and how it uses quantum mechanics to solve complex problems that traditional computers are not capable of, but trust me, it gets pretty complex. So all you really need to know is that quantum computers have the potential to process data at a much, much faster rate than traditional computers, and they're capable of solving complex problems at unprecedented speeds. We're talking about something that makes your average supercomputer look like an oversized wristwatch. So, all of a sudden, those uncrackable private keys could be looking a little more vulnerable. Now, I said potential earlier because there is still a long way to go in the development of quantum computers. The threat they pose, as well as, to be fair, the benefits they could also offer society, are still some way in the future. That's because the processing power of a quantum computer is measured in qubits, that is, quantum bits, and it's been previously thought that machines with at least a billion qubits will be needed to break the standard RSI algorithm that most online encryption relies upon. However, at the moment, the top quantum machines have qubit counts in the low hundreds, meaning we can all relax for a bit, right? Well, maybe not. That point in the future may have to be revised to some point, possibly, right about now. This is because of the recent news of researchers in China claiming that they have found a way to crack the standard RSI algorithm using existing quantum computer technology. Now, while there is perhaps understandable skepticism of the claims, if they are indeed true, then they could add up to, quote, one of the biggest things ever in computer science, according to an expert cited in the Financial Times' report on the story. Even the man regarded as the father of quantum computing seemed impressed, albeit reservedly. Peter Shaw, a mathematician based at MIT and who in 1994 unveiled the algorithm that set quantum computing research in motion, is quoted as saying, as far as I can tell, the paper isn't wrong, although he caveats this by arguing that it may still not actually present much of an improvement. So, should we be worried? Well, yes and no. Quantum computing most definitely falls into the bracket of disruptive technologies. And this isn't just a case of people building faster computers than the ones we have today. It's a whole new way of computing that will render everything before it obsolete. And Anything that threatens the integrity of data security, be it in cryptocurrency or elsewhere, is a threat to be taken very seriously. Now, lots of work is being done with the purpose of unleashing the power of quantum computing on the world. This power will be used to good ends, but also to bad ones. Fortunately, however, it seems that there is at least an awareness of the threat, with steps being taken to mitigate it. Quantum-resistant algorithms are being worked on too, and the crypto industry is heavily involved. Just recently, it was announced that Algorand had introduced quantum resistance with its state proofs upgrade. Perhaps, given that Algorand founder Silvio Micali is based out of MIT, Peter Shaw himself was consulted. It's not just Algorand, though. Cardano is working on quantum resistance as per comments made by Charles Hoskinson last summer, while Avalanche is thought to be working on quantum resistance subnets. 
IOTA, ah, now there is an old school crypto for you, is already apparently quantum resistant thanks to its directed acyclic graph technology. There are others besides, and you can be pretty sure that the issue is going to start cropping up on a lot more roadmaps in the near future. Essentially, the threat posed by quantum computing to crypto and cybersecurity in general is not one for us to worry about today. We've got plenty of other more pressing issues to hand right now. But if there's even some truth to this claim by those Chinese researchers that it may not take a billion plus qubit machine to start playing havoc with our encryption protocols, then it's something to start taking very seriously. After all, humanity has a habit of suddenly taking giant technological leaps forward. See last year's successful nuclear fusion test, for instance, meaning the expected timelines for world-altering technologies can be subject to rapid revisions. Progress can really sneak up on you. So you can be pretty sure that any crypto projects not actively working on quantum resistance are most likely already well behind the curve.